I'm very excited to share this one with you all. I'm doing a painting of this barn, and it's uh, special because it's for a good friend of mine. It's a barn from their family property, and it's a gift for Christmas, and they don't know that uh, I'm doing it. So that's one thing that makes it super exciting. The other thing is that it turned out really well, and this was actually the first barn that I think I've ever painted. So for this one, I'm going to be using Sorol tracing paper, and I could have freehanded the drawing, but I wanted the barn to look specific to you know the actual property. And the next step is to just block in the big areas. Um, so starting with the sky, just mixing up some ultramarine blue and, and white and a little bit of black to give it sort of a gray overcast look. And then for the barn, I could have started with several different options, but I just decided to go with sort of a medium gray tone just to fill in the big areas. And same for the green. The grass and sort of foliage turns out really good in the end. You're gonna like that part, I think. But I just started with sort of a medium to dark green to just kind of fill in those areas. So next I came in with a darker green for the trees and bushes and vines and sort of various plants and things that were around the front of the barn. Continuing with the darker areas, I went ahead and blocked in the inside, the interior of the barn, and the windows and doors and some of the recesses with with black. And you know, I, normally I would mix up a black that isn't a pure black, but in this case I, I did want a very stark contrast between the front of the, the, the barn, as you can see here in the photo, and the sunlight, and the areas that are on the front of the, you know, the wood. The next step for, for this was to go ahead and take a lighter gray and just sort of start laying in some of the lighter areas on the front of the barn. And I'm not painting every single individual board here, but I am approximating, I'm kind of counting how many boards do I need in a certain area, and then I'm just trying to match the numbers best I can. Again, not trying to be photorealistic, but trying to capture the general texture and color of the material. So once I get through with a pass of the lighter material, I went back with the same really small brush and started to work in some of the darker uh, details in between the boards. And I think what I'd like to note here is that, again, instead of painting every single board, I'm primarily looking at individual boards that really stand out to me or areas on the barn that are recognizable and just trying to make sure I capture those. So here I'm just working in some of the horizontal lines and also starting to put in some of the shadows underneath the eave of the barn. I'm mostly doing that with, it looks like black, but I think it's more of a uh, burnt umber. And I say, take that same color and again, start to work in even more of the contrast between the boards. You know, at this point I felt pretty good about where this was headed. I think you know if you can make it through the rest of this video or even if you want to fast forward ahead it really starts to come together near the end and I, I just felt like at this point I started to get that sense that you know this might turn out pretty good. So you know I'm, I'm continually taking the original photo and uh, comparing it to the, the painting just to see how close it is. Is it close enough? Does it look like the same place? And also just trying to match color as best I can. I don't think I did an amazing job on the color matching for this, but I did okay. So here, here I'm working in some, some bluish grays, which will be the background for the tin. And I'm spreading some of that across the, the entire barn just to kind of even out the, the effect. So before I start adding the rust color of the tin, I, I went in and divided up some more of the boards and added in some divisions between where the tin has, has rusted and where it hasn't. This is was a super simple and easy effect to do, painting this rust color on top of this bluish uh, tint behind it. And I continue to just essentially work this with, with several different brushes to try to mimic the texture as best I could. Again, I did not paint every single tiny bit of rust on here. It's just you use the brushes to effectively sort of fake what, what you're seeing if that makes any sense at all you know you just with acrylic especially you can just continue to work it until uh, it looks good this next little part is quick but satisfying uh, i really enjoy adding the light shining through in what i assume is a hayloft you could really tell the old boards were sort of rotted away and there's gaps in between them and 
uh, that effect was really you know fun and quick and easy to do. Here I'm just using a palette knife to try to add some fine straight lines to define the, the, the rooftop. And I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using uh, white, and I'll later I'll go back and, and add black and some other colors to, to create more of a shadow. But it it, it just kind of creates this well defined edge between you know, the sky and the barn. Kind of mimics you know sunlight. Yeah. So once I worked around the uh, the entire roof and and some more of the horizontal lines, uh, I started to add in some washes. So this is a light green, some light. Uh, almost magenta to try to really bring out the color of the wood and then on top of that I came back with almost pure white to really define the different slats and boards I think it really started to add depth and look pretty pretty solid so this next little part is really satisfying for me I mixed up several different greens and started to just work in with a flat brush uh, some of the highlights you know lighter shades of green on top of the medium green that had already laid down as well as on top of the darker trees and bushes. So you'll start to see I'm using this uh, a broad painter's brush that's really gnarly. It's got very stiff bristles and it just worked fantastic for adding in sort of leaves and little shadows and different you know highlights that were catching sun. As you can see here, I just went all over the place with that as well as some smaller brushes, just back and forth, right? Dark colors, light colors, some yellows, some whites. Um, just building up depth. Finally, I've worked on the the rainbow. Uh, I mean, finally, by I've been sitting here looking at this the whole time, thinking about okay, I got to deal with this rainbow. This I think I could have done better with, but it, it turned out okay. I think the clouds worked out re really nice, um, and I actually painted those with my fingers, as you can see. I don't know why. It's just sometimes it feels like it's easier for me to make blurry, smudgy-looking um, effects with my fingers than it is with a brush. Now I want these videos to be helpful to, to anyone who's trying to learn art or wants to try something new for the first time and it, it's hard for me sometimes to know exactly what would be the most useful tips or tricks or what really would be helpful. I, I also just want people to know you know you can do things like this like I've never painted a barn like I honestly don't think it's like inherent talent that just you know only certain people can do. I think that these things are achievable by everyone you just have to to try and to care you know the first time might not turn out so hot but I guarantee you the more you work on things like this the better you, you can get at it so it maybe hard to see but for this last little bit here all I'm doing is going back with a tiny little brush and alternating between some darker and lighter colors and just adding tiny little highlights and details just things that continue to push it forward and make it feel like the, the image has more depth these last little pieces really do take it to the next level sometimes. You, know, you can always overwork it, but you just have to go back and keep tweaking as necessary until you feel good with it. I was super happy with the way this thing turned out, and I'm probably going to do some more uh, of this subject matter for sure. So yeah, I know this place means a lot to my friend, and um, I'm kind of excited to give it to him and see you know, how, what he thinks about it. And I'm super happy with how it turned out and I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Signing these things can be uh, nerve-wracking sometimes. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, you know, it's like you've done the whole thing and at the very end you have one little final touch that you need to do. And I've mentioned this before in my other videos, but I essentially hit this type of work on paper with an isolation coat and then with a satin varnish and let it dry 24 hours in between each of those coats kind of seals it in, gives everything a, a nice look and protects it from sunlight and dust and other things like that. So yeah, this is how it ended up turning out. I'm super proud of it. I really am. I'd love to hear what you all think and if you like this kind of thing and uh, if you want to give it a try, give it a try. I'd love to hear how it goes. That's it for me. I really appreciate it if you made it this far, especially. Um, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, hit the notifications, all those kind of things. It really does help. I could use your support. Appreciate it. See you next time.